Hey, how's it going? Got some cards to read for you. Uh, today I pulled from the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck. Um, number 41. Moon Maiden. Uh, so... <laughs> On other cards, I have referred to people that look like this person as bird people, but um, I actually think this is uh, an angel in this case, or they probably were in other cases too, maybe. <laughs> uh, but uh, in this case, I'm going to say yes, and that is because this card is telling me that the picture represents uh, a, a dream breakthrough, like something you've been dreaming of breaking through. And because it's the moon card, I'm going to say it's like a subconscious collective dream. And... Uh, That's why the moon figures is because that tends to be kind of a symbol for dreaminess and uh, un, uh, dart. dart? <laughs> I was going to say drat and I said dart. Okay. Dart. <laughs> unsubstantiated dreams I guess you could say but they haven't come to fulfillment because <clears throat> you know they're dreams and I noticed that the bright the bright area here the white sort of horizontal mistiness going across there I'm gonna call it a line it um it, the only place you're gonna like be dreaming of flying <laughs> and then find yourself BAM real close to the moon is if uh I, <laughs> it almost looks like a collision but I think what it is is like a I'm not saying this is the same thing but I'm also not saying that a similar thing can't happen because of the type of energy so, if you've ever seen a ghost show, and they're investigating uh, something uh, negative or demonic, I, like, usually this would be categorized, I think, as demonic. But when they enter from their realm into this one, there's like a snap or a breaking of glass, some kind of percussive noise. And since it's not the same kind of percussive noise as... Oh, I can't reach behind me. I was going to reach behind me and whack the wall. <clears throat> like, it might... It, we might have to think of this particular type of percussive noise as being on that type of different level. So, I mean, maybe in... Oh, this is crooked. <laughs> no wonder I'm sitting sideways. Well, that's not new. But anyway, um... Maybe the percussive noises that, uh, and breaking is, uh, something coming through that, uh, doesn't want to be let in, you know, it has to fight its way in, and, because it's, you know, <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> um, in this case, though, we obviously are not going to be able to see a sound, but I don't think this is making much of a sound. I think it's more of a, uh, again, with the collective thing, sort of a, she looks underwater here, even though she's wham, going into space. Uh, because it's dreamy and, like, maybe sleepy, like, uh, you're asleep under, uh, not under the influence, but uh, just under, like, full awareness. Um, 
because it's it's not a breaking sound. It's more of a whatever you call it when like a gas gets into a room and maybe goes through a curtain. You know, like a <clears throat> you might not see it, but you'll maybe smell it. <laughs> like in some way, you'll realize that something has entered, and so. I think because this is not malevolent, it's coming through more easily, more gently, especially because when you're asleep, you're not as able to defend yourself from, let's just call it stuff sneaking up on you. Um, you just have a, like a different awareness when you're asleep. So that is my interpretation of that. Uh... Uh, but it says New Beginnings, also there at the bottom, which I didn't mention. So, <clears throat> I'm going to quickly read through the, uh, well, I'll read it at regular speed, <laughs> what the guidebook had to say. So, Moon Maiden, New Ideas, be Beginnings, Creativity. The Moon Maiden arrives to offer you a new beginning, a new face and facet of yourself, that is aching to be shown to the world. Those qualities that you have been quietly cultivating are ready for the limelight. The secrecy was important, for it protected your new face and kept what was precious close to your heart. But now is the time to come forward in full splendor. Announce the new you to yourself first. Reveal it slowly to the world, like the waxing moon. Allow others to be surprised by how mature and grown up this side of you is. <clears throat> now it's time to set yourself free. The Moon Maiden belongs only to herself, and she is summoning the parts of you that challenge convention, that refuse to be intimidated, that cannot be tamed or put in a golden cage. The Moon Maiden invites you to shine with your own light, to have radiant curiosity, and to ask anyone who offers you a mouthful of dogma, why do you believe this is so? Questioning everything others assume is a given and do not oh, question everything others assume is a given and do not collude with the drama around you. Become so unpredictable yet an eminently re reliable friend. The Moon Maiden invites you to answer only to yourself and remind you that you are not anyone's property. That is significant to me today that you're not anyone's property. And it's funny. Oh my gosh, I just realized the source of what's uh, compelling me to say this right now is an old friend of mine. Like, I've known her for a long time, but yes, we're both old. <laughs> we went to high school together. Uh, we were like the two black punk rock chicks in Hollywood. <laughs> there were more, but we actually lived in Hollywood, so distinction <laughs> um okay anyway uh we just be talking or whatever and you know how you'll say something like you want someone to do something and uh she would always just quip right back i'm not like um she would quip right back but she was quoting Squ squeaky from laverne and shirley and she'd be all i'm not your slave so that's something I've always associated with her. And today, right before I started doing this, she had posted a, a comment, or not a comment, but whatever you can put something up in the feed, like the general feed, and then <laughs> she saw they're trying to make us slaves again, or they're trying to bring slavery back. And I thought, <laughs> just now, well, you really like stick to a theme, don't you? She's right, though. I mean, I have thought the same thing because we have these uh, politicians and I guess donors and definitely uh, people uh, just, pardon me, average citizens on the right that are into some really draconian stuff that they want to do to like other people. And, and I, I've mentioned this in previous re readings <laughs> recently. They really want to get biblical and medieval with people. Like, they really want to turn back the clock. But 
I always have the thought when I'm hearing that, yeah, but why do you think it's not going to apply to you at some point? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like sometimes we need to study history a little bit close, more closely. So anyway, um, yeah, they are like inf infringing on trans rights. Everyone knows that. That's the big obvious one. They want to take away gay rights. They want to, I'm sure, take away their right to marry um, the same-sex marriages. Uh, they took away affirmative action. They been working on that since it got uh, enacted, I think. <laughs> I'm sure, actually. <clears throat> so, there's a lot of, sort of, people that, well, no, I, I'm sort of indecisive. They're not. They're like, for sure, we want to take away rights, because we feel like we're being infringed upon, and it's like, well, how can you say your rights have been taken when you still absolutely have them? <laughs> And um, you're all for taking rights away from other people that have to fight to get the ones they have. So <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's like on one hand, they want to be the same. They want to be a victim. They definitely want to be a victim. These particular people I'm generally talking about. Um, it, like, I've never seen so much crying and going on when... I mean, it seems obvious to me that they both want to fight other kind of identities because identity stuff is big to be against right now. Um, and I think there's a resentment for people that have suffered at the hands of, let's just say, larger groups of people with more influence <clears throat> because of that. Let's let's just say that. <laughs> and uh they they like don't want you to get ahead and but and they and they do stuff to make sure that it's hard for you and by get ahead I mean job, school, work, uh access to goods. I mean there are forces out there that make it really hard and Call it what you want, you know, if it's not the one thing that people usually say right up front that it is, then you char characterize it, but you can say the other thing doesn't exist. Okay, then what is the cause of the reason for certain groups of people that end up in these situations? It's always like it's them not pulling themselves up from their bootstraps. Okay, let's accept that and then... Look at who and where have, like, problems accessing opportunities of all kinds. You know, I mean, there is statistics backing up what people want to say is not the first thing that I'm not going to say. Because <laughs> there's enough of that in the air. Anyway, um, there's more <laughs> to read on about this card. Um, be true to your soul's calling, even if some around you in a relationship or a job want to capture your light inside a bottle. You know how to rise to the occasion just as unfailingly as the moon does. When the time comes, you return to darkness and become enshrouded in mystery until you are ready to return. Wow. <laughs> Let me just take another quick look at this to make sure I'm not missing anything that I wanted to touch upon. Well, uh, yeah, actually, I, I kind of did, but let me just go back to it. It talks about Revealing a new face or something that you've sort of been working on or conceiving and like just keeping that to yourself. And so in those situations, if you have something new to reveal, it can be 
a little scary, you know, and you may have some concerns as to like, oh, what are people going to think? But those are the kind of things that you kind of, well, you just have to shove them aside because if you are worrying about that, it's like you're going to impede yourself. Like, don't give that power. Just, you know, you got to <clears throat> sort of, <laughs> you got to be like the fool and just, you know, you can't know if you're going to succeed or fail unless you go ahead and do it. So, um, and you know, th there are barriers in the way. And w what I'm talking about here is a shift in consciousness amongst people in my country, but also the world. Um, but uh, it's major, this shift, like a shift in consciousness if it happens, that means a whole bunch of people collectively, subconsciously, unconsciously have decided, yes, we're going to go along with this. This is what we're going to do. But outwardly, especially if you are resistant to that idea um, and you're not conscious of other things that have to do with it, the shift... Ing, <laughs> then you're going to feel weird. Things are going to be happening to you. You're not going to understand why. And when you have had a way that you think or are <laughs> for a lifetime, it is hard to let go of, you know, and especially, I mean, I kind of bristle when people say like, this is being pushed upon my child, or this idea is being pushed upon me, and I don't want it. And it would, it really is. <laughs> it is not. Nothing's being pushed on people that people are complaining about right now. These people, ideas, issues have existed for centuries and have had to be on undercover on the DL, like you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and only certain places and constantly under attack you know mentally physically verbally you name it <laughs> you can't just those people just can't can't just live in peace and then if you don't have some you know uh, if you're not just like cis normal you know you are you present and relate to yourself as the sex you were born. Anything outside of that is like, oh my god, that's crazy. You don't even think of it. And, you know, it's like, you're doing this to me and you're doing this to my kids, but at the same time, uh, the fears of what you think these things are, like these people are showing up at school board meetings and it is like some of the most pornographic stuff that people are saying and complaining about that are not actually happening, you know, like they want to ban books because they say all of this pornog pornography, pornography, they're just bugging you to be out porno. Come on, porno. <laughs> but it's actually kind of like that, you know, and it's, it says way more about them than the issue that they're trying to attack. And that's just one way that people are not, you know, accepting change well. And there's other more violent stuff that's out there. And, and uh, yeah, but <laughs> we kind of have to, you know, those of us that are like, yes, please, let's roll forward, let's change. <laughs> Let's get out of this old mindset of hate and shoot it and kill it and restrict it and shame it and all of that stuff. Like, I'm done. Aren't you done? Can we just have happy stuff that, my God, if you're not happy right now with whatever your lot is, it is so easy now to find something else to do that does make you happy. 
You might still have to do something you deeply dislike, but that's life. You know, uh, I just think it's not great. It's not a great idea to dwell on stuff that makes you deeply unhappy. And also, we could use a little let's be honest with ourselves. Because some of what people are saying they're afraid of and are accusing people of are, is more about them and what they're afraid of. <clears throat> So, that's just my opinion. <laughs> the, uh, I actually, another card, this one flew out first, actually, and it was the Benefactor card, which I just read on, <laughs> and I thought, I don't know why, but then, um, I, I put it down and came back to it later, and I realized that I mentioned before that it looks like they're on a ride and they're all happy to be there. So, in this case, like in, in light of what I'm talking about today, I've mentioned in the past that we, like, made our soul contracts before we were born and, like, whatever we're going through, we actually, this is what we wanted to do, so <laughs> it's hard to be of a split brain and remember that. And... I'll, I'll reference it once in a while and I'll say that we're supposed to be having fun. So, yes, all of the strife and scariness right now, we need to tamp it down, but um, we also, we wanted to go through this and it was a collective agreement, so they're full on like, yes, we remember that that is the case and this is an adventure. This is fun. This is fun for us. So enjoy the ride. That's what I got from this one. Okay, and I also pulled the card from the Animal Spirit. Uh... <laughs> mm -hmm. Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. And I pulled the Cobra. <laughs> I don't know. I can't really do that. Well, not on purpose. One, one time, I was talking to my friend and I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror and I was, you know, on a tear about something and caught myself doing it. You know what I mean by the cobra? It's like the black women do it and it's, I don't know. I can't do it when I mean to do it, but I guess it's like hereditary or something. Because I got all fired up and was like, whoa, you're doing it. Forgot what I was talking about. Um, anyway... So, there is the Cobra, and the biggest thing that I can think of that we would all be aware of about the Cobra is, although I have not seen this because it would be like a really racist meme, I think, these days, but when I was a kid, there was always a Swami, so someone brown, probably of like Asian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, um background and they would have a basket and in the basket would be a cobra and the swami I'm, I'm describing the stereotypical thing that i've seen in cartoons would have a white cloth turban on and they'd just be naked except for a, a breech clout which is like a groin cover diaper pants thing and that's it and uh, their deal was they would play this like recorder fluty thing and make the snake come up out of the basket rise up and then you know they do like tricks like get near it or you know have it like attack and you know miss the guy of course but it was supposed to be that it was controlling the snake and then so that is what i'm thinking of when i first thing that comes to mind is that the cobra, and then also in the animal kingdom, like in reality, they do, I think they just, I don't know if it's, if it, if it's so much about hypnotizing uh, their prey, but I think it might be just <laughs> scary. Like the little rodents and that that bees feed on, we don't give animals enough credit. I mean, they're just born, like giraffes can just get up and start walking and horses. They know other stuff, too, like so, like what not to eat. Not not always, but a lot of times 
uh, an animal will know what to avoid <clears throat> because it'll be they'll be able to look at it and see things about it that'll characterize it at characterize it as toxic so anyway but it's not it's pretty basic i think when you're faced with this <laughs> i think it's just fear they're just struck with fear i don't know about hypnosis they're just like oh shoot i may be it but this might be my last moment um but uh all of that hypnosis talk like look at look at that background behind the snake don't mind me i'm not about to like fill you full of my poison and then eat you <laughs> and nothing to see here Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to read from the book now, <laughs> the guidebook. Pausing, waiting, the inner teacher. The cobra represents a teacher or spiritual guardian. The cobra hovers, ho <laughs> hover, <laughs> hover, sorry. Can't do it right, I'm not really a rap fan. <laughs> uh, the cobra hovers and watches. Ever present, ever protecting, ever loving. The essence of the cobra is found deep within us in the form of the inner teacher <clears throat> and manifests externally in those special guides who've led us along our path. What would it feel like to be a student again? What are you ready to learn? Remember the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When in balance, a student of life, humble, wise. When out of balance, know-it-all, egocentric. To bring into balance, take a class, study. So, I, you know, I can take that a, a couple of ways. And as far as uh, relates to the picture on here. And I could go with the first thing I said with the cartoony, whole hypnotic thing. And in a way, let's not, I mean, let's, let's not pretend that's not out there. And I'm not just talking about, uh, like, American mega, mega people. Um, there are a lot of, like, religious type organizations and I feel like they say that's what they are but I don't know if that's really the truth because certain ones of them you, they, they're global and they're powerful and they have lots of people but then people leave and you find out that they were actually prisoners and you know under the auspices of all of this upright religious type stuff that they say publicly you know, <laughs> behind the scenes, it's not that pretty and nice or what they say. <laughs> so there's an element of being uh, sort of bamboozled, hypnotized, and taken in. Uh, <clears throat> I guess that's it that I want to say about that. And as far as it being a teacher, like the book says, well, everything in front of us and that has happened to us is there to teach us stuff. So maybe the Cobra is a reminder that this experience here is a learning experience, but it's also a fun adventure if we can look at it that way, because my gosh, have we not got enough gloom and doom to think about, you know? So if we're switching up and changing to a new world and having this whole shift, I'm going to say that I want this, but it's already, I think, in motion. And that is just for us to appreciate each other and be nice to each other and instead of being scared of things that are different or unfamiliar, don't jump right in and, uh, you know, be fearless. Cause I mean, waiting and being scared of something that happened to you, 
why not be of the mindset, you know what, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to go first and happen to it, <laughs> you know? So, <clears throat> I just wanted to say a couple of things, and now I lost it. My crazy piece of paper, where did it go? Oh, yeah, here it is. So, I just wanted to talk about... Uh, Oh, God, I'm getting long here. A couple of things real quick. I was at the store. I mean, I've been at the store like every month. Um, <clears throat> and not too long ago, like last year, maybe the year before now, we started to get a lot of veggie burgers in the store, like other ones besides like Morningstar Farms and Boca. <clears throat> and they're more meat-like, which was like the Beyond and the Impossible Burgers. So, I was happy about that, and then, like, be, they had both for a while, and then it's just been, it's just been impossible, impossible, impossible. And I use them, and I buy them, but I prefer the other kind, because Impossible Burger, to me, just tastes like Burger King. Somehow they got that Burger King flavor in there, and I have to season the hell out of the whatever I make to get rid of, to counteract that. So, <clears throat> I went to, and I just last week I was in this particular store, and I said, dang, man, they only have Impossible Burgers every time I go shopping. So, this would have been last month, actually. I, I don't know what I just said, but whenever I said that about the only thing I could find was Impossible Burgers, it would have been last month. So, this month when I get paid and I go shopping, I'm in the same store again, and... They have Beyond Burgers. So, it's funny how things work out for you. and But maybe not funny, how did that happen? Impossible. You know, like maybe you really can just ask for something and have it appear. <laughs> so, I had another thought um, about that card uh already forgot what it was moon maiden about that light area the breakthrough area and i wrote light breaking through insecurity and old loss we're clinging to seeing self differently in the glare maybe that's unsettling <clears throat> so that was just a thought a note that i made Oh, that's personal. Never mind. <laughs> can't go back. Oh, can't go back? Well, we can't really, can we? <laughs> Whatever happened, I think this is more of a, like, don't cling to these attachments that end up being like drag, like dragging anvils through wet sand behind you. <clears throat> but can, can pick up, can't, can't go back can't go back, but can pick up bags and move past old resentments. Country, Our country is struggling in a few quarters to fight this forward roll, that shift, slowly, <laughs> slowly ratcheting. <laughs> They're being all ratchet in the wake and also ratcheting forward. Like, it's not smooth. It's like, <laughs> you know, because... I don't know. Holding on to something that's making it hard for you to have that forward motion. <clears throat> Slowly ratcheting in the wake. Angry at being left behind. Oh, angry at being left behind. Well, um... Was done being mad. Uh, okay, I, I don't know where I went there, but I see <laughs> that I wrote catch up little tomato or be left behind. And that is kind of, well, okay, well, catch up definitely if you don't want to be unhappy and uncomfortable and let go of whatever is holding you back there like that. But <clears throat> the left behind thing, some of us are not going to be down with the shift <laughs> and, um, 
I read a lot of stuff, so I'm not sure if this is... Well, actually, I am sure. I was going to say, I, was, I wasn't sure if this was like some kind of metaphor or if it was actual... Wow, <laughs> that was weird reality. But um, some people are not going to be down with making a shift, so they're going to still be in their own world and they'll, um, when the shift happens, I guess, for, like, everyone. And there's a lot of talk about people who, like, won't make it and they'll, like, be left behind or the... It sounds like they're saying, oh, they're going to be on another planet where things are more their speed, basically. <clears throat> But that is not, I don't think, what it was meant by, like, I don't think it's literal. I think it's that state of mind that'll ha put you in a different state of place. So, also, you'll be aligned with people that are more to your way of thinking. And um, I, the part of the shift could well be us moving ourselves into places that do uh, <clears throat> speak to us uh, and better and more clearly and where we feel more comfortable amongst people that we can relate to better. And that's the thing. Like, I don't think it's a another planet thing. I think it's a thing where the ability to relate is not syncing up and it's creating a dissonance. So... I think once the shift, like everybody gets resettled and moved around, you know, mentally, physically, both, whatever it is, to that place that's like the optimum place for the, them to be, then that we will have shifted. That is, uh, that's what came to mind. So, before I go, I just want to say one thing. I'm not like, uh... You don't hear me say my guides told me this or, you know, something like that because I'm just getting comfortable with the idea that that's what's happening in my head. There's lots of conversations and stuff going on, but I don't necessarily have people like reporting and going, hello, I'm so-and-so from such-and-such. -such. Only a couple of times have I had someone say this is oh well once actually to be honest say this is who I am that you're speaking to but I also understood that it could be any of these kind of people I I, I didn't really ask questions or really feel into it but now that I think of it I do so um but the main voice that I think I hear that informs me to say what I say could be guides and so and so and I'm sure it is but what I really think it is is it's my higher self that is able to access contact with the information with other entities so um, I try to differentiate between when it's just me and uh, when it's not, and I'll say that's just me. <laughs> so I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, now it feels like I took way too long. Thank you and good night.